Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be summing powers of i. We have i to the fourth plus i to the seventh plus i to the tenth so on and so forth all the way up to and including i to the power 64. Now what is the rule here? When you see a problem like this obviously you want to see a pattern. It can't just be the sum of random powers of i and the pattern is you start with i to the fourth and then you every time you increase the exponent by three and then you end up with i to the power 64. So we're going to find this sum and obviously if the rule is not explicitly stated then there might be more than one way to express it right. So that's why I wanted to say it clearly that that is the rule. In other words the exponents are all numbers that are 1 mod 3 starting with 4 and ending with 64. Now at this point I want to pose a question. Do you think Wolfram Alpha can find this sum? What do you think? Because we're going to look at the answer in a little bit. And here we go. If you're not ready, pause the video and make a guess. But Wolfram Alpha says, uh-oh, unable to determine general term. Obviously, it's not clearly stated. It's just a bunch of terms. But Wolfram Alpha, I mean AI, in other words, should definitely do better than this. Maybe in the future. Who knows? Let's go ahead and take a look. I'll be presenting, I think, at least two methods. Let's give it a try. So we have i to the fourth plus i to the seventh plus i to the tenth plus dot 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 i to the power 64. Did I say dot dot dot? Some people say so on and so forth. I said dot dot dot. Hopefully you're not offended by that. Don't get offended by anything I say because I'm never trying to be offensive. Okay, so we can actually express this with the summation symbol the sigma and somebody was calling that a sideways m which is kind of funny, right? Maybe it's not. So we can kind of write it this way. We have sigma, a sum, that goes from maybe n equals 1 to something. We don't know what, what the last uh, index is, but we'll find out. And I want to express my power as n plus 3. No, that's not going to do it. 3n. So remember what I said about the powers. These are all numbers that are 1 mod 3. So kind of like 3n plus 1, right? Maybe. Or it could be 3n minus 2 as well. But I want to I use 3n plus 1. And for n equals 1, I get the first term, which is nice. Cool. So at least the lower limit, is that what it's called? I forgot. But yeah, the n equals 1 works. What is the upper limit? That should give us 64. So set 3n plus 1 equal to 64 you'll get 3n equals 63, n equals 21. Awesome. Basically, solve a linear equation to find the limits. That's it. Now, if the problem was expressed like this, of course, it would make more sense because that would be unambiguous, right? It wouldn't be, it will be clear, in other words. But anyways, uh, you get the idea. Let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem with the first method first. Okay, now, to solve this problem, we're going to look at the following. What is i to the fourth? One. Great. Is i to the seventh one as well? No. i to the tenth? No. What about i to the thirteen? That's not four either. I mean, that's not one either, right? Wait a minute. Uh, will we ever get one? Of course, i to the power 64 is also fun, but how often do you get it? So let's go ahead and come up with a pattern. i to the fourth is just one. i to the seventh is i to the fourth times i to the third, which is i cubed, and that will be negative i. And then i to the tenth is the same as i squared, because i to the eighth is one, and that will be negative one. And then finally, i to the power 13, is that the final one? Uh, at least we're hoping to get a pattern, like a cycle of four, right? i to the power 13 is i to the power 12 times i, which is i, so that will be i. Notice we get 1, negative i, negative 1, i. So we go through all powers. And then the next one is going to be i to the 16, 1 again. So here we go. We got our cycle. We make groups of 4. We start with 1, end with i. In how many terms do we have? How do we find out? We have 21 terms. There you go. You see? That's what is cool about this sigma notation. So we have 21 terms. i to the 4th, i to the 7th, 
i to the 10th, i to the 13th, and then end with i to the 64. We're gonna have a leftover because 20 is four times five, and we have groups of 20, I mean groups of four, sorry. So 20 we will make zero, why? Because if you add these powers, you get zero, right? Every group will give us a sum of zero. Therefore, this is gonna be a zero, the next one is gonna be zero. Let this be the leftover. I to the 64 is one, and that should be the answer. Make sense? Yeah, I think it should, right? So that's the answer. What would happen though if the first term was a leftover? You would still get one. Obviously, this should always work, right? Hopefully you get the idea. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method for this problem. Is there a second way to solve it? Maybe even there's a four, third way to solve it? You're gonna let me know, right? So let's go ahead and write some terms, a bunch of terms to get the idea. Now, Wolfram Alpha can't solve this problem, right? Or can it? No, it can't. But we can solve it. Anyways, so think about this as a special sequence or series. Is this, is this like something special? Arithmetic maybe? Well, arithmetic means every time it's gonna increase by the same amount or decrease, right? But in this case, it doesn't work because we have powers, so maybe it's multiplicative. I mean, geometric, right? And when I divide this term by that, I get i to the third, I get i to the third, so on and so forth. Yes, there is a common ratio, so this is a geometric series or geometric sum, right? So how do you evaluate it? It's a finite geometric series, by the way, because you can't add infinitely minima powers of i. Maybe you can, but you're not gonna get a definite answer, and you might be getting something real weird, like getting negative one over 12. Anyways, that's a different story. You can go ahead and check that video out. So let's see how we can express this. And if you remember, when we have a geometric sequence like a sub 1 plus a sub 1 r, dot, 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 all the way up to a sub 1 times r to the power n minus 1, which happens to be the nth term, by the way. So we have n terms. This would equal what? We can take out an a1, we, that would give us 1 plus r plus dot, 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 all the way up to r to the power n minus 1. And that should give us a1 times 1 minus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r. By using, you know, algebra, you can find the sum. Let's go ahead and use that formula then. The first term is i to the fourth. 1 minus r is i in this case, by the way. I'm sorry, it's not i, it's i cubed, right? r is i cubed, yep. And the first term is i to the fourth. And then i cubed is going to be raised to the power n. n is the number of terms, and remember, we talked about it, there are 21 terms. So we're going to raise it to the power 21 divided by 1 minus r, which is 1 minus i. Great. This is 1, so don't worry about it. Now we're going to simplify this. This is 1 minus i to the power 63 divided by 1 minus i. 1 i to the power 63 is i to the power 60 times i to the power 3, right? So that should be, that should be 1 minus i to the power 3 divided by 1 minus i. But wait a minute, i cubed is negative i, so that's gonna give me 1 plus i divided by 1 minus i. But wait a minute, aren't I supposed to get something different? So let's go ahead and check our work. When I, yes, exactly. So here's the, here's the problem. This is not the right answer, you know that. So because the problem is when I express my sum, so here's what I should do, let me tell you. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to cut this part so you get to see uh, my mistake. But I should take out an i to the fourth and start with one. Make sense? And obviously, if you do start with one, you're not going to end with i to the 64. You're going to end with i to the power 60. That's why the last term is going to be different. And now this is i to the fourth times one minus. Now, remember what, what happens with this? i cubed to the power 21, right? divided by 1 minus i cubed. Okay, that was my mistake. Uh, the denominator should also be i cubed. But this becomes 1, and now this becomes 1 minus i to the power 63 over 1 minus i to the third, and then this is i to the power 
3 again remember that and I don't even have to know at this point what i to the third is but I do know it of course this is going to be 1 plus i over 1 plus i and that's going to be 1 and this brings us to the end of the video thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe I'll see you next time in another video until then be safe take care and bye bye